Okay, so back on another Dr. Zero Trust uh, show here. I've got Asher and Tarun from Banyan. Um, it's breaking news right now. It's Friday at 5 o'clock. Um, I should be drinking beer and chilling out, but can't stop because Uber's stuff is going on. Um, we're not gonna we're not gonna armchair quarterback the Uber situation. However, comma it's interesting because Asher recently posted a blog like a week or so ago, maybe a little longer than that, about how MFA is kind of quote not enough. And in this in this scenario, as well as Twilio, as well as Okta, all these other instances, we're still dealing with people being fished, even though they've got MFA quote in place. So. Asher, if you wouldn't mind, kind of give your two cents right off the bat. Like, why is MFA not enough when it's it, it, it's still it's still in the market and people are still buying MFA? Like, it's one of the number one things, but it's not enough. Why is that? Yeah. So, I mean, we know education isn't enough because people are falling for the stuff. So everybody for the last like, you know, 10 years, five years, they think multi-factor authentication is going to fix it credential and token. Um, but that's, that's something that people for some reason always are willing to share. Like you get a simple email, you get a text message without thinking twice. People just assume, Oh, okay, this is legit. I'm going to share the information. And once that's shared, it's like, I, I have no control over it. Right. So MFA for most people think they think it's good enough, but obviously we've seen in these recent uh, breaches that you need a little bit more. But let's be, let's be, let's be like honest for a second though. Like it's, it's better than nothing, which ain't saying much, but it's, it's not enough because when someone is, when an, when an adversary is willing to put in the effort is the point is they can get past that. And I, I want to be clear because I know I'm going to get hate mail from somebody that says you're bashing MFA. MFA is a good thing, but what we're seeing is that there are other pieces of this puzzle that can be valuable as well. Is that fair, Tarun? So, you know, I think MFA is really good at the human element. So if you assume your password is compromised, which it most likely is, MFA ensures that it is you who is clicking the button. But it's that exact same reason that makes MFA weak. It's, it's just asserting the human element. It's just postulating user trust. So even the problem is the user sometimes gets fished. The user sometimes the trust is directed at the wrong website. And so even though MFA is better and better and better at asserting user trust, and it's much better than a password without doubt, the user is still the risk and MFA doesn't change that. And whether we like it or not, you know, you educate your company, you, you send them literature, you run phishing trainings, people always fall for this stuff. I, but yeah, right. But I mean, yeah. we, we train people like we've, we've, there's billion dollar startups that teach people how not to click shit. And here we are clicking shit. Like, I, I, I mean, to me, this is the biggest horn swoggle in the history of cyber. This and cyber insurance are the two things that just stick in my craw every night. Like it, we can't, like you said, the, the, I got, I love that, that comment, right. Redirecting trust to the user is not a smart thing to do. The like technical controls fix user problems. Uh, but but can I just change the topic a bit? You know, how this, this concept of user trust isn't just about security. It just isn't just about IT. It happens in real life. Uh, Ponzi schemes, you know, someone comes, uh, the, the fake bride screams. Th these, these kind of schemes have been going on for hundreds of years, it, it, at, like thousands of years, maybe. Yeah. It's, just, it's just human nature, right? Human, we have to trust something. And so in, a, in, in people will violate the trust. People will find a way to violate the trust. And what we're seeing recently is if you do a good job targeting a company, like you target Uber or target Twilio, uh, the risk is just immense. The, these guys get really sophisticated. They find your weak spot. It's like one disgruntled employee. It's one lazy employee who didn't attend training. And then they just go wreck havoc from there. And I, I, I think it's probably worth noting, too, that um... – the trust gets put into the training side of this, right? Like we, we say, okay, we trained them. And now we trust that these people are educated enough and expert enough that they're not going to fall for this type of stuff. It's, I mean, it's, it, I don't know how much proof people need that this is not the way to approach this problem. I, I, I I'm not answering one more friggin' hate mail about fishing training. Cause it, that that horse is dead. It's buried. We're car. We're paving over the ashes. 
Asher, I mean, am I wrong? Is no, there... no, you're right. I mean, I think I think you said it. Like the the controls that need to be put in place are are there because no matter how much you train, how much you educate, all it takes is one person to not be paying attention and fall for you know like like what they just did with Twilio. It was a URL that looked legit. Somebody clicked on it. No matter how much you train them, it could be just a person you know, having a coffee, being on the phone and responding to something, you know, multitasking. And all of a sudden you've shared credentials you shouldn't have. And I mean, I, 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 I've been fished. I got fished two weeks ago. Now me, I use browser isolation. So the, the stuff didn't work, but like I'm a tinfoil hat person that sits in my house and reads about this stuff all day long. Like anybody can get fished and by God, I've had fishing training till it's fallen on my friggin' ears. So I think that this, you know, it's, it, it just, it just continues to be proof that there's not enough. And uh, you guys have a, not only are we going to talk about this, but Tarun's got a way to show how that this, how there's a better way to do this. So let's, let's kind of run through this scenario. Cause I want to, I want to move past the pontification into the, uh, I don't know, application side of this. Yeah, sure. I'm happy to show it. Just like a couple of minutes. I just want to show you guys how the Twilio hack happened. I didn't, I haven't had time yet to recreate the, Uber hack, but maybe you don't have WhatsApp. <laughs> <laughs> but let me just share my screen and kind of show you guys what happened with with uh, with Twilio. So you know we don't have to keep yeah, as Jay said, pontificating, right? So what what happened? So I'm just going to share my screen. Can you guys see my screen? Okay. Yep. yep. Okay. So let, let's just start. Uh, Twilio uses a tool called Octa, and a lot of people use Octa. Okta is just kind of a single sign-on tool. So this is my legitimate Okta page, SSO. And for, for Twilio, they do SSO.twilio.com, right? This is their Okta page, um, which they have now turned off. But in the past, they used to have an Okta page called SSO.getbnn.com. And um, the way it works is you enter your username and password. You know, that gets you to the next step. Then they have turned on multi-factor authentication, uh, this case called MFA. And they, I have to enter a code. Uh, they basically use a short-term code to ensure that you are the user you say you are. So let me just enter that. Six, two, four, four, five. So at this point, you get access to Okta. And then the beauty about Okta or a single sign-on tool is you just need to authenticate once. Once you authenticate, you know, you can go about accessing everything that you need to do your job. So that's how, that's, that's how the general system works. So what happened with Twilio is they got an urgent email from IT. It said, hey, message from IT. This is Banyan. Can you just confirm you're able to still log in? Looks legit, right? Now, I don't know if you noticed this, but you see it's the same SSO yeah, dot. Yeah, there's a it's pack a, instead of a dot. Pack. So this is literally what happened to Okta, uh, to Okta and Twilio. They put a dash. And now, you know, you and I, we're sophisticated guys. We get it. But they are not, right? Most, some users are, they're busy. They just click on that link. Now, this page... Look, it even has my name in it. It looks just like the legitimate page. And so I'm like, yeah, you're right. The IT guy sent me the email. Let me enter a password. So I enter my password. And sure enough, you know, this looks pretty legitimate as well. And it says, hey, enter your passcode. OK, let me enter my password. One, two, three, one, two, three. And boom, I've given my credentials. I've given my username, my password. And you can see the, the attacker got it. And so on the attacker side, Essentially, they have a full session into your Okta. They have a full session into all your apps. And now they can go about doing anything they want with your credentials. And these credentials are valid for 24 hours. So it's valid for a full day. There's literally nothing you can do. So this is how the hacks happen. Yeah. Now, any I mean, comments, Chase, can... before I go into mitigation? Well, I was just going to say that like that um, when I was doing red team stuff, uh, that was one of my favorite. And this this was years ago. Like that was one of my favorite things was to go off and change an O to a zero or a lowercase L yeah. to a one. And like you said, nobody's going to pick up on that. And it, uh, it's really interesting, too, that 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 human side of um, making people feel like there's a rush to do this. You know, hey, you need to do this or we're going to that's I, I used to do that to folks all the time. I would say. Hey, if you don't if you don't log in right now, you're going to lose access, and they would jump into it. So, I mean, this this stuff is it's it's so crazy, right? And the fix is actually so simple, right? The fix is, hey, just add one more layer of security beyond user trust. So, the main thing that got compromised here is 
everything was something associated with the user. I have the ML token, I have the password, I have the username. And so the simplest way to solve this is, and I'm just going to use Banyan's own security portal to do this, is to, if I put my name in here, what it's going to do is it's going to prompt you for a certificate. And the certificate is tied to the device. So as soon as you tie a certificate to the device, now, you know, you can go through the flow. If you don't have the certificate, it's going to say, hey, you can't authenticate. If you do have the certificate, it's going to take you to an MFA flow and then drop you in. Assuming Okta works. Yes, exactly. And then it drops you into your dashboard, right? So, so this is a, what we propose, a pretty simple mitigation. So just verify the device before you drop the user in. And and there's a, a, a key point there that I think that, that is worth noting, right, is that this is not uh, adding a super crazy level of complexity. This is not making it where the user has to do 10 push-ups before they get to log in or whatever else. Like, it, it is your device, my device, whatever. Like, we have to verify that with something that's a cert, and it just... It just negates all that other shenanigan. Um, and, I mean, that was part of what you wrote in your, your piece there, Asher, which... I, I don't know if you're a visionary or if you've got one of those crystal ball things from uh, Lord of the Rings, but you saw this coming before it came. And here we are yet again with another major organization. So would, would doing that one thing make an, a massive uh, increase in the right way to solve this problem? Yeah. So just that, I mean, it, it's, it's about economics, right? So if you just do the device posture and identity piece of it, you'll probably solve 99.9% .9 of the problems today. And then it's the battle of, okay, now the attacker is going to look for the next thing. And then we got to figure out um, what to do next, right? But just adding that device identity piece. And if you see uh, in, in Tarun's demo, uh, we didn't use SMS, right? We didn't use like a token. We didn't, it was based on a push notification. And if you tie like a push notification to a physical device, and then I have to use my iPhone that's doing face ID, that's yet another thing that I can't even share. I can't share, you know, you can't share your face. Right? I can't share my face. No, nope. you know, if somebody says, Hey, uh, if I send a message to Tarun and say, Tarun, can you send me a picture of your face? That's going to be suspicious, right? If you so, fall for that, you should just be drowned in a lake. Like, I'm sorry. That's uh, unequivocally. You should just be beat with a rubber hose. Well, I, cause... I, I, I just want to point out that that the face, again, when you assert user trust with the face, you can find, I can find a way to fish that. Like, I'll sure. be like, Asher, just authenticate with your face. And then, you know, the website at the end of the day knows you authenticated. So the same phishing technique. It's the user element that you want to supplement. You want to provide another element that's kind of related to but orthogonal to the user. And in our case, we feel the device. The endpoint is the best way to do it because you register that endpoint once, maybe when you join the job or when you get a new laptop, and that becomes... So uh, one by itself is insufficient would be the overarching point. And like anything in security, it's a game of layers. right? So, so MFA was an excellent supplement to the user layer. It's a great supplement. It made the user layer much more robust. Bad guys have gotten better. Now you need to add another layer. Like just trying to supplement the user layer more and more and more is helpful, but but I think it's time to focus on a different layer. I I, I would I would wonder if um if as these types of technical approaches really prove that they're solving these issues, because it's there's a a slow gazelle sort of concept here, right? Where over the course of the next however long, the companies that don't get owned, we're going to be able to look at them and go, well, what did they do that's different? And, you know, if they do these things, then it's causing, I wonder if over the course of the next X number of years, these technical things are finally going to start killing off these approaches that just don't, don't fix the problem. And it, maybe then we won't have to do some of this training stuff. I mean. Yeah. So, so like, um, I'll give you an example, right? So like maybe two, three years ago, there was the whole concept of like UEBA user and entity-based behavioral analytics, yeah. right? So it freaked everybody out, yeah. It freaked everybody out, but that might be the next thing, right? So you said visionary, this is something we, we might put into the product. So if you look at like before anybody even logs in, we know that let's say 100 people in our organization downloaded the app, 
we know where they are based on you know geographical location yeah. from the device we can say okay most of our uh, employees are in the u.s uh we don't have anybody international let's say for example now i know whenever there's an authentication request or an attempt to gain access i'm going to look at that first and anything outside of the u.s is extremely suspicious so we need to start like uh tarun was saying there's it's always layers. It's always one security check after the next, after the next, after. If you just do one thing by itself, there's going to be ways to, to get around it. Yeah, but I think... And, and the, the layers need to be transparent, right? The layers cannot make the user productivity fall. But I just want to point out one thing. Like These hacks we're talking about is Okta, Twilio, Uber. These are not slow gazelle chase. These are the, oh. the cool companies with the cool security teams with really big budgets that do all the UEBA stuff and the SIM stuff. They have all of this. The, the user, they all deal with the same common element. It doesn't matter how rich you are and how many people you have and what budget you have. The weak link is that user. So if you cannot, it's a very simple policy. Assert user, assert device. And I don't think we're asking for too much. Just assert the two of them. It doesn't matter whether you're Uber or, you know, your dentist's office down the road. Like, uh, yeah. And the other part is the dentist's office down the road is probably hacked. They just don't know it. It's just that Twilio and Uber found out. Like the yeah. other guys, well, all the dentist's office will put it on a post-it note. Stuff. Yeah, on the, the dentist's office has it on a post-it note as you walk into the building. Like, here's, you know, are you? I I think, too, that... um. You, you said something, Asher, that uh, is is interesting. But it, in my opinion, like the the layer side of this thing, I don't think I don't think the layers honestly are making a whole lot of sense anymore. I think really now, if you look at the right way, and this is where we've changed a lot of people's thinking in the ZT world, is like the bad guys. This is the only space in all of conflict, cyber warfare, whatever where the bad guys tell you with 30 plus years of history, how they're going to do things. They haven't changed tactics too much. Everybody freaks out about TTPs. We're still getting fished. So if we take away this concept of, I need a thousand layers to stop it. And we just go, look, we know how compromises occur. We know the methods that are used. Let's put technology in place that actually negates their ability to be successful. Like what a crazy concept. Yeah. Yeah, I, mean, not, I don't need out layers. I don't need a hundred. We're not even talking like DLP and all the other stuff. We're literally saying just to keep the son of a bitch out of the front door. Here's the things that we put in place. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but if like again, something that's been proven is MFA was something that people thought like that's all you need MFA, right? But even MFA can be done wrong if it's focused on one thing, right? And in this case, the weakest link is always going to be the human. So if you leave it just up to the human, no matter what methodology you use, someone's going to slip and someone's going to share credentials. So it's got to be like the, the demo we just showed is the first thing that happens even before credentials are asked for is there's a certificate, right? And the only person that has Tarun's certificate is Tarun, Tarun, right? So that's one thing that I can't even fish. I mean, that's going to be super obvious if I say, Tarun, go send me your... Your, you know, certificate, please. IT needs it. Somebody would do it. Somebody would be like, oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, somebody will do it. But then once you get past it, is, the it is stored securely. It is stored yeah. securely in the TPM. So you'd have to be pretty expert to go pull it out. Of yeah, the your, ever, your average user is not going to be able to do that. Yeah. But even once, once, like, let's say, let's say they, let's say they get one bit of information from Tarun, like his, you know, he can, he can share his um, token or he can do the push notification, I still can't get in because the device has a certificate that knows that it's Tarun and it knows it's Tarun's device. So it's got to be those, all those things playing together to make sure that whatever, you know, I, I like to assume that the hu human is going to make a mistake. So my system needs to, you know, prevent that. Not my, my expectation is, you know, I buy all this technology and then, you know, I assume the human's going to do the right thing. Any any time that's happened, there's been a breach, and that's actually this, yeah. I buy all this technology, then I rely on the human. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I remember writing a paper on Kevin Mitnick, like in the '90s when I was still in school, and I, you know, at the time I thought this guy was like this genius hacker doing all these amazing things. He was just social engineering, you know, 30, 40 years ago, and all these breaches are just that. You just go to the to the 
the person that is going to fall for it. And if you don't have the technology in place, it's going to be easy to get around whatever you deploy. Well, and the, the last piece of this equation, I think, is to be able to actually apply uh, a fix to an issue when you when one does occur, right? Because if you see, if I'm sitting in the SOC or the operations center and I see some weird login, okay, maybe somebody got fished. I wouldn't really. But if I see these other things taking part of that sort of compromise uh, equation, I should be able to act and go, nope, you're you're locked out because this the anomaly level yeah. now has hit the threshold where the, the weird stuff has has caused me to go, uh, uh you're done, and then apply a control. Yep. And that's the next level, I think. So yeah. at least in, from my perspective, you start by checking the basic stuff, just authenticate the device. The next level is, you know, with Banyan and other tools like CrowdStrike and Sentinel One, they they can assert to the posture of the device. They are scanning the device for malware. You can start integrate. So you can keep doing more and more and more. But uh, basic hygiene is 99.9% .9 of the battle. Uh, MFA was basic hygiene, you know, five years ago, and, but it's just not enough today. Today you need right. more. And it doesn't mean you can get rid of MFA. Unfortunately, as my daughter says, you know, the baths only gets more frequent as you grow older. You just have to bathe more often. So you just have to keep that hygiene going. <laughs> You have to bathe more often. That's a, that's a good quote to end on. All right. Well, so here, here we had it. We covered raising ground. Uh, we did a demo. We talked through all the stuff. This is a way to solve the issue with phishing and MFA. And like Tarun and Asher both said, these are not slow gazelle companies. So if it can happen to them, it could happen to anybody unless you choose to do something differently. Thanks, y'all, for jumping on. Thanks, Jess. Thanks, Jess.